King Lowry Lungshuk's tale is one of redemption and retribution. He was the grandson of a high king called Lowry Lork, who had been killed and had his throne usurped by his jealous brother, Kovhok, the miserable Cole Bregg, who was already a king of Leinster himself. Having his servants send word to his brother of his own death, Kovhok deceptively lay waiting for his arrival. When Lowry arrived, he prostrated himself in mourning and what he thought was the corpse of his brother, only to feel the sharp sting of Kovhok's blade piercing his heart and killing him. Seizing the High Kingship of Ireland for himself, Kovhok began to grow anxious about the son of his slain brother. Paranoid that he might rise up to oppose him, Kovhok invites Lyra's son, Alil, his young wife, and their child's son to visit his court for a meal. Little did they know the horrors that lay waiting for them there. It was a night filled with brutality as Kovhok made the young boy watch as he butchered his father before his eyes. To further satisfy his sadistic corruption, he forces the young boy to eat a piece of his father's heart and to swallow a mouse along with its tail. The traumatic experience left him in a state of shock that rendered him a mute. Henceforth, he was known as Moan, which is the Gaelic word for mute, and he was nicknamed Moan Ollum, which means the mute scholar. Since it had been a rule since time immemorial in Ireland that no man with a blemish could hold the kingship, Kovac felt that disabling the boy with a blemish such as this would surely be enough to prevent him ever rising to take the kingship from him. Many years later, while playing a game of hurling, Moen took a hard blow to his shin and let out a scream saying, I'm hurt, I'm hurt, to the surprise of the other boys and spectators who always knew him to be a mute. He speaks, he speaks, they celebrated, which in Gaelic translates as Lowry, Lowry. And this is how he came to be called Lowry Lingshock from that day forward. As he approached manhood, the threat from his granduncle Kovhok grew increasingly worrying and Lowry is said to have either fled or being exiled to France. While there, he enters the royal court of France, who hold his claim to the kingship in high regard. They welcome him into their ranks and put him in charge of an army, but he never loses sight of Ireland and his true goals. Meanwhile, the news of his exploits have reached the courts of the Irish kingdoms, much to the delight of a Munster princess called Moira, who had fallen in love with Lowry from afar. Here the story diverts away from Lowry's mission of retribution and redemption and meanders into the magical and romantic. Summoning the assistance of a great bard named Craftina, Moira composes poems and songs to send to her crush in France. Upon hearing the enchanting music and listening to Moira's words dancing poetically and with purpose in harmony with each successive note, and realising that this had been written for him, and by an Irish princess no less, Lowry decides to return to Ireland to meet this woman, for he knew he had fallen in love with her. Arriving at Munster he was greeted with great pomp and ceremony and a rich feast was laid out for him, but he was unable to get a moment alone with the princess he had come to see, as her father made every effort to keep him distracted and surrounded by company, while it was known her mother slept outside her bedroom door each night with one eye open, lest any man try to bed their beloved princess. Larry was at a loss what to do, until Crafton at the bard, perceiving the situation with clear eyes, came to their aid once more. Once the feast was coming to an end and people began moving to the sleeping quarters, Crafton had told the couple to cover their ears while he used his bardic knowledge to play an enchanting sleeping lullaby which saw those who were still awake at the assembly falling asleep in their places within moments, and those who were already sleeping fell into a much deeper, undisturbed sleep. Lowry took his princess to her bedroom, and they spent the night together. But somehow the lover's secret was known to the mother who brought her daughter before the king, demanding to know who had defiled their princess. Without hesitation, Lowry, who was standing among the crowd, stepped forward and admitted it was he, but explained how he had travelled from France enchanted by their daughter's music and poetry, intending to make her his wife. 
and while they weren't entirely pleased with how this had come about, they agreed that if any man was to marry their daughter, that they were glad it should be a man such as Lowry Lungshuk. As time goes on, Lowry increases his prestige and amasses a great crowd of supporters from Munster to Leinster and as far afield as France. So much power, in fact, that he was able to merely march an army right into Leinster and take the throne for himself. At this point, we return to his mission of revenge. He employs the men of Leinster in constructing an unusual building which looked like a normal fort from the outside, but it was lined and built entirely with iron panels, iron nails and iron beams on the inside. Lowry sent an invitation to Kovach to attend a feast in Leinster, which he would prepare under the pretense that he wanted to bring an end to their differences and negotiate a truce. Kovach was naturally reluctant at first, until Lowry assured him by saying he could bring along as many armed men to accompany him as he needed to feel safe. Arriving at the designated meeting place, the Iron House, Kovach found Lowry and his men waiting outside for their guests lining the entrance. Suspecting a trap, Kovach refuses to enter the house until Lowry's mother, the widow of his slain father, steps forward and confidently walks towards the entrance of the building. She makes eye contact with her son and gives him a gentle, almost imperceptible nod. His fears allayed by this gesture, Kovach leads his men inside, only to hear the large iron door bolt behind them as they find themselves suddenly in a room filled with darkness. Lowry and his men quickly begin building piles of dry wood around the outside of the building, and they set fire to it, leaving Kovach and his men and Lowry's mother burning inside. Victorious, Lowry went on to become a very wise and honourable High King of Ireland, who was much loved by all under his reign. In a mythological tale about Lowry, he is famously described as the king with the horse's ears. Inexplicably, Lowry had horse's ears, which he tried hard to keep a secret by growing his hair long enough to cover his ears from view. He only had a haircut once a year and always had the barber killed to keep his secret from getting out. Once, Lowry agrees to spare the life of a young widower's son who had been selected for the much maligned task of royal barber after she pleaded with him to have mercy. He made the boy swear never to reveal his secret to anyone and in exchange his life would be spared. But as time went on, the boy couldn't carry the burden of the king's secret any longer. He was compelled to tell someone, but knew his life, and maybe even his mother's life, would be in danger if he did. He sought out the advice of a wise man, a druid, who suggested he should share the burden by telling his secret to a willow tree. He did so, and the boy felt like a weight had been lifted from his shoulders. Some years later... The young boy is now a young man, and it so happens that the instrument of the royal harp player had gotten damaged and needed replacement. A new harp was made from the wood of the very willow tree that the young boy had shared his secret with all those years ago. When it came for a night of a great feast, the harper was called to entertain the assembly, but instead of musical notes, the people heard a voice sing in the words, Na chlush koppel er lewri lungshok, two horses ears. On Larry Lingshock.